Moves are being made. Kristaps Porzingis, Tingus Pingus. Boston Celtics have just went out of their way. They've given up a guy in Marcus Smart who, I mean, he said himself he wants to be a Boston Celtic for life. He's not there anymore. Kristaps Porzingis, potential, I mean, when he was a rookie, we were saying this guy could be a potential NBA superstar, an MVP caliber player. He's not so much that anymore, but he is a star in this league. And when you add a stretch four like Paul Zingard, next to Jalen Brown, next to Jason Tatum, on paper, that's pretty scary. You've got three like three headed monsters over there at Boston. Does this give him more of a championship edge to go win one? I'm not really too much too sure if it does or if it doesn't. But at the end of the day, I respect the move because they've gone out of their way. They've got a guy in Kristaps um, who does have star pedigree. But at the same time, losing Smart, I don't really know what to think of it at this point. So I'll let you take it away. What do you reckon about th- this whole move? Uh, I mean, being a Wizards fan, seeing him and having that career year with the Wizards last year, I think it definitely does, I think, improve them as much as it's a, a costly move because obviously they're picking up his $36 million player option and You've got the concerns about how you're going to keep Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum on the books with both of them eligible for, for Supermax contracts because they obviously both made all the, the All-NBA team. So that's the only concern I have in terms of, you know, you, you let go of a, your glue guy, a guy that was so synonymous with Celtics basketball and wanted to finish his career with the Celtics in Marcus Smart and to get a guy like Porzingis. You do add more on the offensive side of the ball, and I guess he does pro- uh, provide that rim protection that you know the Celtics could utilize, especially with Robert Williams um, occasionally being um, under an injury cloud, and you That's know a scary front court. Yeah, it is. Um, and if you can somehow bring Al Horford back and see what kind of a role he brings, you've got a very good rotation there um, from a front court perspective. But yeah, I do like Porzingis as a player. Always have. Um, I got his jersey from the New York Knicks when he was, you know, in his first couple of years. I think, you know, when he ha- went down with that ACL injury, um, we were talking about him, you know, having that ascension, like you mentioned, to superstardom. And I think he started to show glimpses of it again. He started to get his confidence back in his body. I think he's, you know, despite the, all the injuries and the concerns we have with him, he's been a lot more productive. You know, there, was, there might be question marks. The only thing I could have as a question mark with this whole matchup or this uh, match with uh, the Celtics in terms of um, now being a member of their organization is he, he we've seen in the past with guys like Luka Doncic, he hasn't really had that production that we would have liked alongside a co-partner or a co-superstar or a co-star at that matter. So that's the only question marks and concerns I would have related to that is how will he be able to uh, um, fit in with his role knowing that Jason Tatum's your number one option and arguably, you could say J- uh, Jalen Brown is your second option, even if Kristaps Porzingis comes there. Is he happy to take a bit of that um, back seat to let these guys do their thing? Um, and in another question mark is, does Jalen Brown actually get extended or do they look for a uh, p- possible trade for Jalen Brown and acquire pieces to get something from him? Yeah, crazy. Bro. So much money just needs to go to so many different players. It's like they might have given up Grant Williams, Marcus Smart, I feel like those are two leaders on that team who kind of group them together. I mean, we did hear that news from like Mark Spears. Maybe the Boston Celtics don't have such great camaraderie. Those two players strike me as two locker room guys who kind of bring the team together. Kristaps Porzingis, as much of a talent as he is, the one thing I will say is in the past, he's, he's like ego, I guess, has been kind of challenged and people have this perception on him that he's not, not such a great like leader and locker room guy. We saw it with the Knicks. I mean, he said one day this will all be exposed. I remember he tweeted that. And then with the Wizards even, maybe that's a different story. But, I mean, he's not there anymore. So it kind of makes me question, why is he such a talented player, such a talented asset to have? Why does he find himself at three organizations in such a young career? I mean, obviously his value is high, but I don't know. He just doesn't strike me as a very... Just like a locker room type of guy. And I feel like that's what Boston need more of. Another Al Horford. Yeah, it's weird though, because you have to you do have to take risks on these guys to compete for championships. But at the same time, 
I don't know if losing all that is worth bringing Porzingis in. And when Jalen Brown's up for that max extension, how can you afford all those three with th- these new CBA rules? Hmm. I do, like I said, I do like what he brings in terms of being able to have that, uh, you know, ability to stretch the floor as a as a big man and, you know, the the mismatch that he'll provide to a lot of the, the guys on the opposition front court. I think it's... It's definitely something that will take a little bit of the load off a guy, like I said, of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown to have to do the bulk of the scoring. And, you know, with the way Derek White came along last year, you sort of, as much as he's not Marcus Smart, I think he provides something very similar, yeah, um, probably offers a similar amount of scoring and, you know, his defense is underrated. So I think he can definitely fit in. And you've got a guy like Malcolm Brogdon, an experienced player, who's probably going to stick around now, even though he was in trade talks to go to the Clippers when that all broke down. I think you've still got a lot of depth, and I think they they did well in this trade despite the fact that there's some uncertainty with all the money that's being distributed amongst those three guys. But there's a comment that I saw that Chris Tupps made about Marcus Smart, and I think this really would resonate well with the Boston Celtics fandom, is you cannot replace Marcus Smart, but I look forward to also bringing high effort and high energy. So he's obviously keen on that like third chance to kind of turn... His perception around, yeah, and I think he, I think he wants to be there. You can s- tell with that comment. He obviously wants to be at the Celtics. He obviously loves what they're doing there. Must have a lot of respect for Brad Stevens, um, and you know what Joe Mazzulla is hopefully going to do with that uh, roster going forward. So we'll have to wait and see. But I think you know, despite there's some question marks there, I can understand why the Celtics pulled the trigger on it. Um, but if it doesn't work out. There's obviously got some decisions to make there, yep. what they do with their future, what they do with Jalen Brown and how it all plays out. But again, from an NBA fan's perspective and from, um, I guess, f- if we're putting our front office cap on, I can understand why you make yep. the move because it hasn't worked in the last few years yep. with um, you know, that dynamic and that lineup that you had. You missed out on a chance to win a title um, against the Warriors. And then a lot, obviously this, yeah, and then this past season, you obviously didn't get over the hump against the Miami Heat team who just scraped in through the play-in. So yeah. um, something had to be made, a move had to be made um, that was you know, going to move the needle for them. And they did that. And I think we'll see that it will actually turn out to be a, the right move. But it's you can understand why there's some question marks there um, in the, the short term. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Actually, I love the move. Like I love that they went out and got Paul Zingas because you're either all in or you're not in at all. Mm. But as like an NBA fan and as we're podcasting, don't if you're a Celtics fan, don't think I'm just hating on your organization because I do like the move, but you kind of have to argue for both parties. Ultimately, yes, I think general consensus is Chris Stops bring him in. It's the right decision to make because you did miss out on the NBA Finals. But overall, I have to weigh up Chris Stops pulling his past and why it could kind of fall back and not be such a great move. But yeah, personally, I also rate the move. But yeah, just try to weigh up. All the different scenarios, and I think if you, if you, like I said, the last point I'll make is if he's durable, if he can play out a full season without any injury restrictions, or you know something limiting his full p- uh, potential and performance, great move. But again, we can't trust that because he's had numerous issues when he was at the Mavs, when they were obviously going through that playoff run in the bubble. Um, you know the time when he was at the Knicks, did his ACL, and even with Washington, he he missed some time last year. So again, there's always going to be those question marks there, but. A fully fit and firing Kristaps Porzingis is one scary proposition for opposition defenders um, and other teams to have to try and grapple with. So Absolutely. just have to wait and see. But it's like a, like you mentioned in the, the last video that we did, it's a very exciting season coming up in the NBA and I'm really looking forward to seeing all that the storylines that come from it and um, what kind of script we'll get this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Nah. We don't actually think the NBA is rigged. No. But- it was just a little... Yeah, just a little joke. <laughs> Don't come in the comment section. <laughs> Benchmark. Yeah. But anyway, we hope you guys enjoyed uh, this video. If you are a fan of this types of discussion type of videos, don't know if I just string together English, but if you do like discussion type of NBA videos, Benchmob is the place to be. We'd love if you guys subscribed, if you guys could chuck a like, comment, whatever you guys want to do. Um, but yeah, plenty of more content like this coming your way. Every single week, we give, we're doing a giveaway at 1,000 subs. You get one of these bad boys, an NBA jersey, valued up to $150 from the NBA store. So, yeah, make sure you s- subscribe. English, please. But 
Anyway, I'm losing my um, vocal. So it's been Marcus from the bench mob. It's been Danko from the bench from the bench mob. We're on the road to a thousand subs. Get around us. Join the community. We'd love to have you on. But for now, that's all we have time for. Absolutely. Peace out, guys. Take care, guys. Cheers. That was a sign I had to wrap it up. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Probably leave that in the video too. Yeah, fuck it. Who cares, man? Hello, yes, you at home. This is Commissioner of the NBA speaking to you, Adam Silver. Here's a message in courtesy of Benchmob in collaboration with the NBA store. When Benchmob hits 1,000 subscribers, they'll be giving away a free NBA jersey to a lucky subscriber. So just do all the things listed on the screen.